I love mystery games. I love puzzle games. I love visual novel games. I love games with interesting, complex characters and storylines. I love games with branching paths or multiple endings. Nine Hours, Nine Persons, Nine Doors, also known as 999, has all of these elements. However, whenever I talk about this game, it seems like a lot of people haven't played 999 or even heard of it. I did a quick poll on Twitter, and a combined 71% of my audience hadn't played the game or either of its sequels. So today, I want to talk about 999, because it's one of my favorite games of all time, and to spread the word about it since it kind of fell under the radar. It's just such a great mystery game, and I want more people to know just how great it is. That being said, I will be discussing some early game spoilers in one section of the video, so I can really dig into what I love about the story. However, I will be avoiding major spoilers, and I will also make sure to provide timestamps to skip past the spoiler section. But first, this video is sponsored by Skillshare. Skillshare is an online learning community with thousands of inspiring classes for creative and curious people. Explore new skills, deepen existing passions, and get lost in creativity. Skillshare offers loads of different classes and workshops depending on what kind of creative outlet you're into, like animation, music, or website design. One of the most common questions I get about being a YouTuber is what kind of tools or programs I use for making videos. I currently use Final Cut Pro for video editing. So Benjamin Halsall's class, learn to edit using Final Cut Pro X from import to edit, export, and backup, is a good start if you are using that program. Skillshare also has a ton of classes using other editing programs. I used to use Sony Vegas Pro when I edited on a PC, so that might be a good choice for non-Mac users. Or there's Adobe Premiere, another program that some of my YouTuber friends swear by. Whichever program you have, if you're having trouble getting started or need help with a more complicated edit, Skillshare is a great way to do so. Unlike YouTube tutorials, Skillshare's classes don't have ads, and depending on how the classes are broken down, it takes me a lot less time to find the specific instruction that I'm looking for. Skillshare is always launching new premium classes, so you can stay focused and follow wherever your creativity takes you. And it's less than $10 a month with an annual subscription. The first 1,000 people to use the link in the video description will get a one-month free trial of Skillshare, so you can explore your creativity. Alright, on to the content! The premise of the game is that several people have been kidnapped by a mysterious figure named Zero and are forced to participate in the Nonary game. Trapped aboard a sinking ship, nine people must get through a series of nine puzzle doors within nine hours, or else they will die. The repetition of the number nine, players, doors, hours, and other clues littered throughout, is why this life or death scenario is called the Nonary game. Nona is the Latin word for nine. There are extremely strict rules to follow, and any attempts to cheat will also end in death. You play as Junpei, a college student, who finds that one of the other kidnapped people is his childhood friend Akane, creating a motivation for not just his own survival, but that of someone he genuinely cares about. However, there are seven other victims also trying to survive the ordeal, and some are willing to sacrifice others to make sure they get out alive. Each of the participants is wearing a bracelet, with a number from 1 to 9 on it. These are the keys to getting through the numbered doors. Only 3 to 5 people at a time can enter, which is done by scanning the bracelets at a data pad. The numbers from their bracelets must add up to form a single digit number that matches the number on the door. This is done through the process of finding the digital root. Basically, you add numbers up until you are left with a single digit number. For example, if you had 2 plus 3 plus 5, that makes 10, but 10 is two digits, so then you would take the 1 plus the 0, which makes 1 the digital root. Luckily, you don't need to do too many of these calculations manually. There is a calculator app built into the game. Each time Junpei goes through a numbered door, he gets trapped and is forced to solve a series of locked room puzzles to progress. Along the way, he learns more about the other participants and the circumstances that brought them all there. The visual novel aspect of the game kicks in when deciding what door to go through. Only certain characters can go with Junpei based on the path he chooses. Depending on the group the player decides on, the story branches off into multiple possible timelines, several of which can lead to Junpei's death. 
There are multiple bad endings, which you need to complete to access the true ending. Thankfully, there is a fast forward button that allows you to quickly get past any dialogue or story beats you've done once before. So, it's a visual novel game, mixed with an escape room game. Okay, sure, but what makes it so special? For me, it's the gameplay, the music, and the story, and how all three of these interweave. Gameplay. The game is a standard point-and-click adventure game, combined with the narrative formula of a visual novel. There are two modes. First is story mode, which is the exposition and dialogue sequences, and these make up a good portion of the game. Choices that you make during this mode affect what timeline you end up in, either with dialogue or door options. Some choices only become available after you've discovered information from a different timeline. The other mode, escape mode, activates when you enter one of the numbered doors. You are locked in and must solve the puzzles to get to the next area. During this mode, you click around the environment, get items in your inventory, and combine items to piece together the various room puzzles. The puzzles in each room are unique and varied in how challenging they are. Some I breezed right through, while others took a little longer to figure out. The puzzles provide a good break from the exposition throughout story mode, while also trickling in hints and themes about the nonary game, and why the characters are there in the first place. Clicking around the environment also provides some fun character interactions, a lot of which seem kind of random at first. Suddenly, you go from exploring a room to listening to these other characters wax philosophically about all kinds of things, ranging from conspiracy theories to weird experiments. It isn't filler or flavor text, though. A lot of what gets discussed comes into play later in the game. Although story-wise, Junpei and the others only have nine hours to escape, there isn't a ticking clock in real time, so you can take however long you need to in each room. However, there is a nagging feeling in the back of your mind. You can still feel that sense of running out of time due to the premise of the game. One thing that made 999's gameplay so unique is how it makes full use of the dual screens of the Nintendo DS. Some of the puzzles only work as well as they do due to the clever utilization of this aspect. The PC slash PS4 port managed to keep the puzzles intact for the most part despite the change in presentation. However, one puzzle at the very end that was designed specifically for the two-screen presentation had to be replaced with a completely different puzzle. I understand that the change was unavoidable, but in doing so, the scene loses some impact that the original had. So if you can play it on the DS, please do. But if the PC slash PS4 port is the only option, try to keep in mind that it was originally constructed as a DS game. I find that a few puzzles took a little longer to complete on the PS4 version due to the different controls. This piano puzzle in particular took far longer to do compared to using a mouse or stylus. So I'd recommend the PC version over the PS4. Despite some of the changes in presentation, the overall story remains the same. I need to find a way out and fast. Music. The soundtrack for 999 is spectacular. It originally was a text-only game, though the later ports would add full voice acting. So the music had to work especially hard to keep players engaged, since there could be large sections of text and exposition littered throughout. The music is incredibly atmospheric, and really helps to pull the player into the world. The tense and creepy music during some of the bloodier bits really sets the player on edge. The composer was Shinji Hosoe, who has worked on a variety of games and even the soundtrack for the anime No Game No Life. Hosoe was hired because the director, Kotaro Uchikoshi, knew that Hosoe's eclectic musical background would be beneficial for the game's presentation. Visual novels are story-centric, so the sound needs to fit the mood of the scene, be it tense, sad, or dreadful, or even relaxing. Hosoe-san is best known for Ridge Racer and Street Fighter EX, but he's worked on all sorts of titles and his talent crosses as many genres. I knew his sound would be perfect for the dizzying twists and turns of 999. The soundtrack for 999 is good at keeping you engaged with the story, without being too distracting or pulling you out of it. 
The puzzle room music is specially needed to work, since the player is focusing on trying to solve the puzzle, and if the music wasn't exactly right, it very easily could annoy the player, and make the puzzles less impactful and potentially annoying and distracting. I've played many a RPG or JRPG where I get so sick and tired of hearing the same music over and over, but that was not the case here. There are several graphic and gruesome scenes littered throughout the game, and the unnerving music that plays in the background really helps build up the tense atmosphere and mood. Since the original didn't have voice acting, all you had was this unsettling music to listen to as you are reading these viscerally descriptive paragraphs, and it is incredibly effective. The first time I played through it, I got the X ending first, which is arguably the most horrific ending. And boy oh boy, does that music make it so much worse to read through. But in a good way? <laughs> If you are playing the newer version with voice acting, make sure to turn the music up in the settings to really get a sense of the atmosphere. I get why they added voice acting later, especially since the sequel games had it, but I will never forget the first time I played through the game and all I heard was that creepy music while trying to read the story. And that means none of us have alibis. We were all off searching the rooms we'd been assigned, looking for those parts. Yeah, that means anybody could be a killer. Story. The real driving force of this game is the story and characters. If it wasn't a compelling mystery, or if the characters didn't make you interested in learning more about them, then the game would have flopped, as the visual novel portions can go on for long periods of time before getting into the escape room sections. Thankfully, it has a tense, interesting, and dense story, filled with all sorts of twists and turns along the way. 999 is incredibly good at handling its twists, and making them feel earned, even if some of them are a little weird. If you've seen my Danganronpa video, you'll know I love when a game can pull off a crazy twist, and 999 keeps you guessing right up to the very end. I think the sequel, Virtue's Last Reward, pulls off the wackiest of twists in the series, so if you'd like me to discuss that game in another video, make sure to let me know by commenting below. Also, if you're a fan of the Danganronpa games, you'll be happy to know that Kotaro Uchikoshi teamed up with the creator of Danganronpa, Kazutaka Kodaka to create a brand new game studio called 2Kyo Games. They've so far made two games in an anime series, with a third game still in the works. I'm looking forward to seeing how this collaboration pans out. When Junpei meets the other characters for the first time, the group agrees to use code names based on the numbers of their bracelets, to keep their identity secret in case Zero is listening in. Except for Junpei, who accidentally says his name at the beginning and doesn't bother with a code name. It's kind of a flimsy excuse, the idea that Zero might have just kidnapped random strangers, but it serves more of a meta purpose. Right away, we don't know who these characters are, anything about them, and if they can be trusted. A lot of Junpei's first impressions about his fellow players prove to be wrong, which sometimes is good, and other times, not so much. Besides Junpei, there is Ace, a calm, older gentleman who takes on a fatherly role for the group. Snake an intelligent young man who is blind, but is still able to move around well due to other heightened senses. Santa, a snarky and sarcastic young man who tries to crack jokes and act indifferent despite their situation. Clover, a spunky, bubbly young woman who wears her emotions on her sleeve. June, the codename for Akane, a cheerful young woman who is Junpei's old childhood friend. Seven, a large man who has amnesia and cannot remember anything about his life before the Nonary game. Lotus, a scantily clad woman who is pragmatic to the point of coming across as cold or uncaring. The Ninth Man, a scrawny, nervous man who refuses to say either his real name or a code name. Depending on the room path you choose, you get to interact with up to four other characters, who each behave differently depending on who else is in the room, story beats that have occurred, or other factors that you aren't privy to right away. There were some characters I felt ambivalent towards in one branching path, but then I'd take a different path and I'd see a whole new side to them, and it made me realize just how little I really knew about them at the start. As the mystery unfolds and characters become more desperate, you can no longer be sure who can be trusted and who can't. Characters who in the beginning preached cooperation and working together suddenly become more likely to make decisions for their own self-preservation. At one point, there is a theory about there being a traitor in the group, further fracturing them and making everyone more and more paranoid. Since characters can behave radically different from timeline to timeline, it makes the mystery even more compelling. 
It's paying attention to what stays consistent between the timelines that helps you piece together the truth. Okay, going into some minor spoilers for the first hour of the game. Here's the timestamp if you want to go in blind when you play it. After you escape the tutorial puzzle in the beginning, it doesn't take long before the true stakes of the Nonary game are made clear. At first, the group is unsure what is going on, and think that all of this is some elaborate prank. The Ninth Man attempts to cheat by going through the numbered door alone, despite the rules clearly stating that whoever scans their bracelet at the door must enter through it. He holds Clover at knife point, forcing the other players to scan their bracelets to allow him to enter, thinking he is being clever and getting ahead of everyone. Turns out, Zero has planted bombs in the stomachs of his captives, and if they don't follow the rules exactly, then it will go off. The others hear the detonation and discover his corpse, though not before hearing his screaming pleas for help and insisting that someone lied to him. Any time there is something gory, the visuals of it only show so much, such as the remains of the Ninth Man. The blood splatter gives you an idea of what it looks like, but the visceral unpleasantness of it comes from the descriptions that are used, and the characters' reactions. Like typical horror games or movies, a lot of the anxiety and terror comes from what you don't see, allowing your mind to imagine the worst. It's incredibly effective at evoking tension, unease, and horror, which makes progressing through the story in that mindset even more compelling. There aren't too many scenes that go all out with the gore, but by having such a terrifying scene right at the start of the game, it sets the stage for the rest of the story. The group now knows the consequences for breaking the rules, and the Ninth Man's dying words make some of the characters believe there is a traitor among them. Can they really trust each other when they don't even know who everyone is? If Zero's on the ship, where is he? I think... I think Zero is one of us. Okay, back to regular non-spoiler stuff. If I had to pick what I love most about the story of 999, it's how it weaves the gameplay into the narrative. It was the first game I played where the concept of going back and starting over, but with new information this time, was a part of the narrative of the game. As you play further and further, Junpei will remember flashes from other timelines. And, in fact, you cannot access certain parts of the game without having gone through those other endings. It isn't just a gameplay mechanic, it's a narrative one as well. I'm sure 999 isn't the first game to have done this, but it was the first one that I personally encountered, and I just thought it was so cool how you could take that gameplay and put it into the narrative of the story in a way that makes sense. I had played games where you must go through multiple routes or endings to complete it, or get a sense of the whole picture, but I hadn't played one where the characters were experiencing it along with the player. Early in the game's development, the concept of mixing the story into the gameplay was a big focus. Kotaro Uchikoshi was a fan of Escape the Room puzzle games, but wanted to know the story for why the player was there in the first place. What brought them to this locked room? What happens to them once they get out? Uchikoshi had previously worked on visual novel games, so he decided to combine the narrative of a visual novel with Escape the Room gameplay to create 999. It is this combination of fun and unique gameplay haunting and atmospheric music, and a rich and dense story that really makes 999 so great. The music pulls you in, the gameplay keeps you engaged, and the story helps to keep you wanting to know more. It really does manage to combine both aspects of visual novel games and escape room games in an effective and enticing way. I can still vividly remember moments from when I first played it, and how emotionally invested I became in the story and the characters surviving the ordeal. This is why it's one of my favorites. If this sounds like the kind of game you might enjoy, please go and play it for yourselves. Have you played 999 before? And if so, what did you think? What are your thoughts on the newer port? Did you prefer the version with voice acting or without? Post your thoughts and comments below. I'm also curious to see if anyone wants to go and play the game now if they haven't already. If you played the Danganronpa games, you'll probably enjoy 999. Also, are there any other games you'd like me to cover in the future? I'm always a fan of checking out more mystery games. I'm Kaluna, and I'll see you in the next video. Hi everyone! Thanks so much for watching! I've been wanting to make a video about 999 since I first started making YouTube videos, but I had a really hard time trying to talk about the game without spoiling all the best parts of it. 
it's just such an important game to me, and I'm glad I finally got to show my love for it to all of you. Thanks to everyone who has been so diligently liking, sharing, and commenting on my videos lately. You are all wonderful, and I am so appreciative. If you'd like to help me even more, please consider becoming a patron of mine over on Patreon. You'll get access to a variety of rewards depending on how much you pledge, like having your name in the credits, joining my Discord chat room, and getting early access to videos. And finally, remember to click the link in the description to get a free trial premium membership to Skillshare. Thank you so much for your support, and I'll see you in the next one.